Hello, and welcome to One Spark Stories, the podcast where innovators, creators, and some unsuspecting risk takers share about navigating highs and lows, laughter and tears, and how sometimes all it takes is one spark of inspiration to find your way to happiness. This podcast will leave you inspired to take action on your own purpose as we connect, create, and celebrate unique sparks around the globe, once again proving that it is a small world after all. Oh my goodness, it is so good to be back here with you all after a slight summer breather that, you know, at first I was really having a lot of guilt over. And then I thought, Katie, why are you doing that? Why are you beating yourself up over something that is a passion project that life just got busy with. So let me tell you, it is not that I have not continued to record and have things coming up. It's that I needed to take pause, be present with the people that matter the most, my family, get some exciting projects lined up. So brace yourself because this show is locked and loaded with some incredible guests. We've got a women's confidence coach. We have a gentleman that's helping connect students with those career and life readiness opportunities well before that graduation day shows up. We have an incredibly talented, hilarious, and creative woman to come on and help guide us through tapping into that creative side. I've got another cockerel coming up part of the Cockrell Consulting Group. Valerie Cockrell will be joining. I have another incredible female. Let me just tell you, I have been rallying the ladies. So get ready. If you want to hear some strong entrepreneurial business voices that are just out there making change, make sure you've subscribed. Make sure you're ready to share the heck out of this show because the feeling I would walk away with after all of these calls with the men and the women, let me not discount them, has been unbelievable, which is why today's episode is going to be so much fun for you because this is bringing together two people I've actually featured on the show and myself. So this is a live conversation I did with Cassie Tucker and Rita Risha. Now we did this episode um, where we talked about the opportunities, the experiences and the lessons we've come to learn through our own unique podcast. Cassie is co-host of Marketing Happy Hour, which is an incredible resource for anybody looking to tap into marketing. Rita is a B2B podcast host, and it's the Bippity Boppity Business podcast, and she also interviews different creative leaders. So we decided let's bring our love for storytelling and podcasting and business together to share a bit of our insights, you know, how podcasting has helped us as entrepreneurs network with these dream collaborators, with these incredible clients, why podcasting is our favorite form of content creation for our business, and what most leaders get wrong about podcasting when they first start out. Now, before you even get into the episode, there are three things that I cannot stress enough as I work with different people launching podcasts that, you know, have put it off in the way that I did for way too long. First thing, stop thinking about it. Seriously, I know there's all these things that you feel you have to have in place. You have to know your market. You have to know your uh, episode art. You have to, you have to have. No, you don't. Because guess what? It can all be changed. You know that little gear icon on every single platform you use? Yeah, it's the settings and those settings can be adjusted. So start and see what your audience wants. And that will help guide what you know you can provide and better meet the needs of people. So that first bit of lesson is to just go with it. Start it. Second, stop thinking about all the things you supposedly need. Let me tell you, I ordered a really fancy microphone. I ordered some really adorable, well, yeah, supposedly effective headphones. I, I use my AirPods 90% of the time. 
I have my mic and I do love it. I definitely do. And I will make sure to include what type it is in the show notes. But honestly, I know so many podcasters that have recorded on location using the most basic thing, wired headphones, wired mic. You do not need any fancy equipment. And in fact, if you listen to some of your favorite podcasts, you can likely tell when they are recording outdoors, when they're in the moment. And that's okay. You're still listening and so will your audience. So stop thinking you have to have this full setup. Same token, stop thinking you have to have a whole script to run by. The most enjoyable podcasts typically are the ones that just go with the flow. They don't immediately stop to prove a point or ask a question. Just go with it. And the third piece, I want you to stop thinking it has to be perfect. Much like I said before, I did take a little bit of a break. It was one week. It happens. Does that mean I should abandon my show? Oh my goodness, no. In fact, it just fueled me that much more. So remember, if you're doing this for your own enjoyment, if you're doing this to build your business, consistency does matter. It absolutely does. But so does the product you're putting out. So if sometimes you need to step back and take a breather in order to collect your thoughts and make sure you're still aligned with the purpose of your podcast, it's okay. Now, if you are looking to launch your podcast, please make sure to reach out to me because Not only am I passionate about sharing stories from other people, I'm excited about getting yours out there as well. So as I continue to support other podcasts through launch and production services, I absolutely would be happy to help yours. As much as I love speaking and helping people find their purpose, I do it behind the scenes as well. So if I'm not looking, if you're not looking for somebody to do a keynote speech, but you want to do a podcast, I'm still your girl. So without any further of my ramblings about why you just need to do it, I'm going to let you enjoy this conversation from our live stream about the pitfalls and pixie dust of podcasting. Make sure you share it with anybody else that's considering to make that move into a podcast or leave us a review if it has really resonated. That's how we're able to get visible in front of others that are looking to really connect with their spark. Thank you for sticking around while I embraced a week of rest. And as always, be well, stay curious, and enjoy the pitfalls and pixie dust of podcasting. Hello, and welcome to Bippity Boppity Business Live. We are so happy to have everyone here joining us for this very special episode. We've called it the pitfalls and pixie dust of podcasting. I have two very special former Disney cast members and even more than that on the show, entrepreneur extraneers, and I'm so excited to bring them on today. So we're going to pop them on the stream so they can say hi to you. So so let's start with Miss Katie Currens. Katie, say hello and tell us a little bit about you in one or two sentences. Yes. Hello, Rita. It's so good to be back. And I am beyond excited to be here. I am a speaker, a podcast host, and do a lot of facilitation, helping people really harness their creativity and take more intentional innovative actions because we are too stuck in doing all those old habits so it's time to reignite our purpose so very excited to talk about that in the world of podcasting specifically I feel like you and I have a lot of similar uh, adjectives that we like to use, reignite, imagine, wonder, magic. It's almost like we both love the the work that Disney (laughs) does for ourselves. I mean, when pixie dust was thrown out there, we're like, obviously, that's just out of work, right? (laughs) Absolutely. All right, to the stage, I am going to bring up Miss Cassie Tucker. For you, Cassie, do the same. Let us know who you are and one or two sentences about you. Hi, thank you so much, Rita, for having me. So grateful to be here. So I'm Cassie Tucker. I'm the co-founder of Cam Media, and content strategy is really at the root of what we do. Um, Everything starts with strategy, and then we implement those strategies based on the goals of the clients, what they're trying to do in their business. Uh, Outside of that, I'm also the co-host of Marketing Happy Hour, as well as Will Talks Biz. So love podcasting and excited to chat about that today. 
Absolutely. So I am so excited to bring you all here. Um, as I thought about this virtual event and what I want to do with Bippity Boppity Business as a whole, I really want it to be a community and a place where all of us can share our ideas and take us through our journeys in a way that is immersive, exciting, and educational. So on that note, let's cue our intro to get everyone in the vibe. Are we ready? I'm ready. <laughs> do it. <laughs> no one makes magic in business like Disney. Join us as we hear from Disney cast members, influencers, and enthusiasts to uncover the secrets of what it takes behind the scenes to make Disney such a successful and well-loved brand. We will hear their journeys, inspirations, and have some good old-fashioned Disney fun along the way. So relax, pull up a chair, be our guest. And let's get down to Bibbidi Bobbidi Business. Well, if that didn't get you in the mood, I don't know what would to talk about everything that we're going to talk about today. So, of course, um, for our event today, we are focusing on the ways we as entrepreneurs have used podcasting to help our businesses. While we are all in different industries, we found that it is kind of one of the best tools um, to build that connection and storytell and give us that um, extra level of um, just thought leadership and um, leverage in our businesses. So with that being said, I'm going to ask our first question of the day and I'm going to tee it off to Miss Cassie. Um, Cassie like she said earlier, is already the co-host of a, a really cool podcast called Marketing Happy Hour, in addition to what she does with Cam Media. But um, Cassie, for you, how has podcasting helped you to network with those dream collaborators and clients that you maybe would not have been able to had you not had a podcast? Yeah, so that's a really great question. Marketing Happy Hour is a very interview based podcast. So pretty much every week we'll bring on anyone in the marketing social media uh, creative space to speak about their experience and their career. And so for us, it's really forced us to build our networks and to reach out to new people that we probably wouldn't have connected with before. Mm -hmm. And our networks have grown tremendously. But not only only that, I've learned so much from each and every person that we've been able to bring on the show. And so that's kind of my way of, of gaining mentorship along the way as well. Um, but also on the collaborator side, it's been really cool because a couple of the guests that we've had on, I've been able to collaborate with on projects. Uh, for example, uh, Josie Maida was on the show and I worked with her on a client project. And so it really gives me insight into some people I can work with on different client projects coming up and um, just ultimately grow relationships with really amazing people in the network. Let's talk a little bit about the strategy of the idea of marketing happy hour itself too, because I think that name in and of itself is very inviting, makes it open to many people in marketing to want to come and talk to you. Um, what made you come up with this idea for your show? Yeah, so my co-host Erica and I were sitting at a restaurant one day and we've always had a love for food and beverage. I came from the restaurant industry. And so we were figuring out a way to bring this type of content to our networks. And we said, I don't know exactly how we came up with it, but all of a sudden we said marketing happy hour, why not? And we looked it up, not many people had that name or really had used it at all. Yes. And so kind of the idea is for us to basically sit down at a dinner table We'll have happy hour with our guests, chat about marketing our experience there. So it kind of creates an intimate audio experience. So it's been really fun to marry the idea of marketing, but also our love for food and beverage as well. I mean, yeah, food and beverage marketing. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, I will ask you the same question, Katie, for you. How has podcasting helped you as an entrepreneur to network and potentially collaborate with dream clients or just creators as a whole that you would maybe not have had you not done your podcast? Yeah, I initially went into the podcast realm because I have an insatiable curiosity. I love people. I love hearing their stories. And so it was really a selfish project. I <laughs> wanted to have an excuse to talk to people and get it out there. But it truly stems from my years, both as an educator, working in business, connecting globally, even working 
at Disney yes. and hearing how many stories of those moments of failure, moments of struggle, and how quickly people gloss over it and think, oh, you must have just landed upon this successful career or, oh, entrepreneurial life, that looks so fabulous and fun and free. Well, certainly there are parts, but it takes a lot of work. And so the notion of One Spark Stories was to get people to hear stories of innovators and creators and all the ups and downs that it took to get there. And at the root of it, the idea that really it's a small world after all, we're <laughs> all connected in this common human experience. So it was not something that I went into intending to make it a business build. It was more of a purpose-driven connecting piece. Mm -hmm. But in turn, it has become a beautiful way to reach out to people that I do admire for the way that they're doing things and open the door to conversation. I don't love the notion of sales. It has right. always felt yuck to me. Um, Same. I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. It's so hard to explain. But I, I think it's shifting the narrative through podcasting by saying, you know what, let's ignite this deeper relationship. Let's talk a little bit more because people want to be seen, heard and valued. So this is my way of making sure they are. And in turn, people are truly appreciative for that. So I don't go into it with anything other than curiosity. And people also follow up with their own after. So it's been very cool, very exciting. Yeah, I would agree with that when it comes to the idea that it used to be really hard to reach out to get to to reach out to people that were a little bit out of our network, right? It used to feel very salesy. It used to feel like uh, if I'm asking you to help me out with something or get your opinion on something, it, it's just uncomfortable. Like, yeah, I would agree with you. But when you ask someone to be a podcast on your show, then all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, they're going to talk about themselves and promote themselves anyway. So I'm not asking anything of them other than their time and maybe to um, just kind of share a few stories that are, are helpful and relevant. But I think what it comes down to is – um, sales, what it was, what it really is supposed to be is supposed to be a way to build long-term relationship mm -hmm. and provide information of value to help the customer make customer make an informed decision on a product or service, right? So for me, I worked at BMW and Tesla for a really long time. And that's kind of how I understood this concept from the beginning. They always talked about, especially at BMW, the lifetime value of a customer. And they would say that if a one person uh, from a family bought a BMW and the salesperson delivered a really great experience for them, then that person's brother might buy a BMW. And then maybe their kid would buy a BMW. Maybe their great grandkid would buy a BMW, right? So that kind of long-term relationship, that lifetime value doesn't happen because the salesperson was a typical salesperson. They went out there and they're like, would you like to buy a car today? Yeah. No, it's not how that works. That's exactly why podcasting is so relevant. It just takes the uh, educational aspect of whatever content it is that you want to provide for your service or for your industry. And you're just providing it free of charge because you have pure intent. The intent is to truly educate. And if that's the case, then the right customers will come to you and they'll want to come to you because they have that experience. So, mm -hmm. I mean, especially for me with Bippity Boppity Business, I wouldn't be here talking to either of you if I didn't have this podcast and growing my network, especially so cool to see like women in business out here mm -hmm. representing, doing an amazing job of um, all the work that you're doing. And that's why I'm so passionate about this podcast. It's it, my goal is to always just provide value, content, and community. I really want to start building this like-minded community um, because, like we all just said, the sales, the the coming out of the woodworks and like being like, "Hey, can you? Do you want to like buy my thing?" Like, I hate that. <laughs> I I don't want to be. Also, I don't want to be a competitor. I really just want to be a collaborator in this space. Everyone has room to grow, and everyone has a place in whatever. 
industry that we're in. So um, that's just why like I'm really passionate about it and a little bit of how it's helped me just as a whole. And um, I've learned a lot too. That's how it's helped me in my business. Like there's information that I maybe would have had to take a very expensive course for or maybe done an expensive coaching call for. And when I do the podcast, I can meet people from those industries and not have to pay for that knowledge. I know I'm not trying to sound like a cheapo, but it, that, that knowledge and those conversations, they help me. And I otherwise yeah. would not have had that. So that's I love your um, ideas and perspectives on this. Um, for, you know, on that note, though, specifically podcasting, why we'll start with you, Cassie, why is it your uh, current favorite form of media and content creation for your business? What's so different about a podcast? Why does it matter anyways? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think to both of your points, a connection is really at the root of podcasting. So like I said, our podcast is very interview based. So Mm -hmm. pretty much every episode, we're bringing someone on, we're able to build a relationship with them, chat about their experience in in the industry, learn from them as well. And I feel like that's kind of different besides social media, for example, where it's just me sitting at my computer by myself creating content, and that's it. I'm not talking to anyone really, you know, that kind of thing. So I love the connection aspect. And then there's a major value add. It's a longer form of content where you're able to push a lot more value for the audience in versus maybe a single social media post. Um, And so the fact that it is a long form piece of content too, you can turn that into micro pieces of content. So I usually like to write down key quotes that our guests share, um, you know, pull snippets from that, share that with our audience throughout the year, just not outside of that single day that we're posting the podcast. So it's a long form piece that lives on over and over again, and you can reference back to it. Um, You know, you can turn it into a blog post as well. And if there's key topics within that blog, a blog post, maybe parcel that out into other individual blog posts. So I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to take that one podcast recording and just make it live on add more value to the audience and just keep that going and going how do you feel about that katie do you feel like that's similar and and the reasoning why podcasting is your favorite content creation for your business or you have other ideas you'd like to add i fell into that learning and i think it's a lot from listening to cassie's podcast and yeah Oh, because even though I have a ridiculously diverse background, partly because I am purpose driven and I'm like, that makes me curious. I need to learn more. And yet marketing is something I've always been intrigued by, but not formally learned or trained or well, anything like that. So by recognizing the value of these stories I've collected, it is now something that I can transfer and share the content because as an educator, it became very clear, well, early on in just learning that we have multiple ways of consuming things and multiple different ways of understanding. I can give somebody a book, but not everybody is going to contain, consume that knowledge that way. I'm a very visual person. I am, I, I need to see it, not to believe it, but just to get a, a vision behind what it could be. Now with podcasting, I've let mine go into both a YouTube channel and here because I I know that some people need to listen, some people like to see it. So for me, that marketing piece has really become a very valuable nugget, but even more so, it's my favorite form because it, it, it gives evidence behind my big challenge to say, we can tell people to think differently, but until we show them how to take action and what that actually looks like and the impact it can have, it's just meaningless words. And so by having these stories out there and continuing to connect with people, it's evidence. It's creating my own big case study to say innovation is what will get you to tomorrow. Best practice is referring to the past. We all know that, goodness, the last two years have completely shifted our world. Yes. And so by seeing ways people can embrace their own gifts and their own talent, this will give them that that extra little confidence to go for it. Yeah, I'm. what I'm hearing from both of you is 
you know, the content is a preferred medium. Podcasting is a preferred medium because it's evergreen. The content lives on after you record it. It's relevant. It's repurposeful. You can create it into many forms. It can be used as a case study. I've even heard someone using it to write their own book. I've heard of somebody who has taken <laughs> interviews and transcribed parts of them, added a foreword, added some learned thoughts, made a book. And it's so amazing amazing for me what you were talking about different learning styles speaking styles as an entrepreneur who has ADHD I have ADHD it's really bad and I never thought I would be able to sit down and write a blog I just thought that's not for me I'm going to just be behind I'm frustrated and I found that wow well with a podcast I can speak in my own voice and then after I can write the blog so I think it's just such a um accessible form of media for everyone to start and use and more importantly it's fun like don't you guys have fun doing yes. this like <laughs> yes I my mean, kids get so annoyed when I'm like oh my god you gotta <laughs> listen to this person <laughs> Uh, but they've actually come to really get excited. So I, I appreciate. I've become quite credible in the middle school genre. Yeah. Um, I am now showing up. Uh, I've had another young lady tell me. So this is fabulous. I've broken through to a whole new crowd. <laughs> right. And I mean, that's important because I think, um, you know, there's so much pressure on entrepreneurs to create and put out content every mm -hmm. single day. And the thing that you're most passionate about starts to become the thing that you kind of dread. And it shouldn't be that way. You know, I'm... I think we can all agree in finding wonder in our work as a, as a core value that we would all kind of resonate with. And, you know, it's that Mary Poppins thing. With every job that must be done, there's an element of fun. You find the fun and snap, the job's a game. So if we can find a way to gamify creating content and not like bang ourselves on the head trying to figure out what blog we need to write for that day or what post we need to make, that's why podcasting is my favorite form of content. It's fun, it's informational, and... um. Let's be honest, it's a little easier <laughs> sometimes, not 100%, not always, but just a little easier, especially for those of us that have trouble getting pen to paper and, and creating content in that way. So on that note, there are things that people get wrong about podcasting. You know, there are misconceptions. There, we talked about the pixie dust of it, the Disney-fied, like rose-colored glasses version of podcasting, but there are some pitfalls of it too. And I'll start with you, Cassie, as our marketing uh, guru. Um, what do some people get actually wrong about podcasting when they first start out? And what's a common misconception? Yeah, so common misconception, I would say that it is super easy to mm -hmm. do. And, you know, we talked about it is fun, but it, yes. there is a decent amount of work that goes into mm -hmm. it. You know, the editing side of things, especially if you do a lot of the pieces yourself, at least in the beginning, right. um, you know, show notes and all of the technical aspects. Uh, that's not to say it's not worth it, but I think that leads to people starting and not finishing through with their show. So there's a statistic out there. I'm not just sure on the, the specific stat for this, but um, I think there's like over 200 million podcasts and there's only a very small percentage of those that are actually still active. So yes. I think what happens is people start, they think it's going to be easy. They kind of lose the traction for it and they, they, you know, shut off from it. So I think remembering what is the intention, what is your why for doing that and keeping that at the core purpose to keep going. Because I think another thing too, people look at their numbers and they'll say, oh, I only have a hundred people listening to each episode, but you don't know what kind of value and encouragement you're sharing with those hundred people or even 10 people who are really, really engaged. And so remember what is the intention behind what I'm doing? It's to encourage, it's, it's to share value, tell those stories, um, help people push through failure. And so keeping that at the core purpose of what you're doing and to push you through because you don't want to fall into that statistic of falling off after, you know, before a year of starting. Um, yeah. So I would say that. So just keep keep it going, stay encouraged and and push through that that tough times. They call it pod fade is what I've yes. heard. That when you start and you burn out with content creation, I've even heard that most people don't make it past episode seven. Um, and honestly, I believe it <laughs> because let me clarify. I did say it was easy. What I meant to say is it's easy in the moment. Like it's easy to create 
in the moment for us to have mm-hmm. these conversations for us to have this energy this um just spontaneity even if you will but after the fact the consistency and the discipline like any other form of con- content in your business it is tricky and it it is always easier when you're doing it with other people that's really mm-hmm. what i have learned it's we when we start mm-hmm. out as entrepreneurs we start to tell ourselves that we have to do everything ourselves. Like we can't ask for help or, you know, maybe we don't have money to outsource X or um, we should be able to do it ourselves. Why can't we? We we add all these tasks for ourselves. And I just kind of got to the point where I was like, I don't have to do everything myself. What areas can I afford to bring some help in, to bring some inspiration in? And for me, like at least starting out, it's trying to work more with both of you on how we can come together and create together and keep ourselves accountable and inspired and motivated to share our message and to share, um, you know, our work because it's hard alone. It's hard alone. I also think that a lot of people, when they first start out with podcasting, what they get wrong is they think that if I just have a conversation, then that's enough. Like the conversation, I just can hop on, talk to someone, and that content will be good enough. But there really is some strategy involved with the kinds of conversations you should be having. You should be thinking about your audience. Your podcast episodes aren't just for you and your mom to listen to. Like, you know, she'll support you with everything. She'll love everything, right? At least my mama does. If you're watching, hi, mom, if you're watching. Um, but, <laughs> hi, <laughs> um, but. (laughs) at the end of the day it's it's really just about your ideal client your ideal customer or your audience if you don't have a customer base I think Walt Disney once said um if you build it they will come you know it's not about he didn't create the experience for himself he created the experience for everyone that would benefit Mm -hmm. from it so Katie um if you want to talk to a little bit about maybe a misconception, something that when you started out your podcast, you kind of learned from, you struggled from, and now you've, you're like, okay, I understand how to do this a little bit better. Yeah, I am going to actually go even further back before that tension gets in when you think, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. There is a lot of work involved because one of the biggest issues for me was doing it. It was starting and it was actually um, some Jody Mayberry, who Cassie and I both have gotten to know and work alongside. He's got all kinds of podcasts out there. And we were together at an event for Lee Cockrell, who we are all very familiar with. And Lee had um, who to clarify, Lee Cockrell used to be former VP, executive VP of Walt Disney World. Um, so pretty, yeah. pretty big guy. You pretty know, awesome very, up there <laughs> amazing podcast creating disney magic and i knew jody from that and had talked to him and was like i've had this idea for years i just want to get it out there and kept asking questions and we're at lee's event and we just keep going back and forth with podcast and i asked him something else about a platform and i was like well should i record it here or there and he finally was like katie you just need to do it it doesn't matter just do it and i was like Yes, sir. But at the same time, I was like, ah, thank you. Thank you. Because we are so inundated with, hey, check out my top tools. This is what you need to make your podcast successful. Well, sometimes it gets to be the point you question what is actually going to work. And I was stuck in that analysis paralysis state, sitting on ideas, sitting on people that I could have on the show, had been doing it forever. And so finally, I was like, you're right. And I came back and um, just decided to go for it, kept the most basic tools. I didn't invest in a ton. And the more I started to listen to other podcasts I had been listening to uh, to forever, the more I'd start to recognize, oh, you know what? I can tell that they're recording from the top of a mountain or yes. from Walt Disney World. Or, yes. And you realize you don't need the full studio setup. So if you are one of those people that's caught in this barrier of thinking you have to have it all together just don't and I could take my own advice on some things at times but (laughs) that is definitely one that too many people don't even start because they are so worried about what it will 
come off as people will just appreciate you for doing it. So I did have Jody on and I did assure him that once I hit that one year mark and made it over the hump of the seven episode, 20 episode, whatever mark, everybody seems to drop off. I was like, you're coming back. And I'm going to prove that I got this. So no, uh, I mean, it's so true. People know just do it. Yeah. yeah, there's a perfectionism in all, I think, in many entrepreneurs that we want the best and the brightest and the perfect. And I guess yeah. a little bit of the Disney in us, too. You know, you, you I, I would feel like Disney as a company is pretty darn good at making everything amazing right off the bat. Right. But yeah. it's not great yeah. if, you know, you're not a team of 25 people. It's just right. you. Um, I learned yeah. this analogy um, from Chris Decker at SalesCast. He is a sales um Cast, focused podcast production agency and he told me uh I was like stuck on this idea and he was like Rita get mo and I was like Rita what, what get mo what does that mean he's like it's an acronym good enough to move on you mm. just have to get good enough to move on he totally said that that's not me but I've actually been saying it every day ever since yeah. because yeah. it's true you if you never start then you never did anything you have yeah. to start and it will get better every time with every episode that you create. Like I'm over here trying to figure out stream yard right now for everyone listening. It looks like I'm a pro and I'm a pro in some ways, but like we're all learning. We're all figuring it out. No one has it all figured out, but the benefit of that is that everyone is coming together and learning at the same time too. So Mm -hmm. it also helps my business because obviously if I understand a new tool or a new service, like I can provide that and, and, and have empathy for the customer because I've experienced the, 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 the glitches or maybe the, like the, the wins Mm -hmm. of it. Right. So I think that's something we can all agree with is that podcasting opens doors for us to to learn and experience it and also to connect because it makes us vulnerable and it makes Mm -hmm. us have empathy to put ourselves in someone else's shoes that we maybe would not have had we not done it. So, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in general, for me, like if it weren't for my podcast, I wouldn't have uh, my business, Reignite Media. Um, Cassie, I know you'd probably be doing what you'd be you'd be doing anyways, but at least, you know, you you have more leverage, you have more conversation, it's helping you with your content. And Katie, I can see your podcast really helping you to be connected with the right people in the right industries so that you can infuse your um, your spark, your magic into their people and culture. So as we're rounding out, I know this was very short and very fast. I wanted to make this announcement about what we're doing with Bibbidi Bobbidi Business. So we're going to be doing a lot more live events for anyone that's listening. And the goal is to create this space as a community for business leaders and, and entrepreneurs who have an affinity for the Disney brand, um, but also want to improve their content strategy, their customer service, their business. If you probably looked at a course for Disney Institute or maybe you're a fan of the Creating Disney Magic podcast or um, any of books of those nature, be our guest. You're, you're one of us. So come hang out with us. We would love to this for this to be an actual conversation where we can get your questions. It's our first one, so I didn't see too many questions. Um, but I do did see one person in the comments, Eleanor, say, uh, to, truth bomb, you just got to go for it. And she loved the get mo light bulb idea. So we did get a couple of comments. So yay for us, guys. Yay. Thanks, Thank Ellie. You. We appreciate Thank you being here. Thank you for your engagement and for your yeah. support. That's it. It for today for Bippity Boppity Business Live. What you need to learn moving forward is that the best time to start with your content and your podcast is today. It's the best way to create connection, make it, um, make new relationships with people that you would never have dreamed of and also if it gets too hard it's okay find someone that can help you to create and if you have any other questions about Cassie and Katie and what they do um, their LinkedIn is here in the LinkedIn world (laughs) but um, please shout out um, we'll start with you Katie shout out how people can best connect with you and then we'll go to you Cassie. Yeah, LinkedIn is definitely where I spend a lot of time. And aside from that, Instagram, everything's under my name, Katie Curran. So you can find me, um, especially at the podcast, One Spark Stories. That's, That's where you'll really hear my heart and the love I pour into the work I do. 
Yeah, thanks again, Rita, for having us. But you can best connect with me on LinkedIn as well. I'm a big LinkedIn fan. Instagram is another of my favorites. So it's at Cassie Joy Tucker. And feel free to check out the Marketing Happy Hour podcast as well. Amazing. Everyone knows where to reach me. My name is Rita Risha. There's not a lot of us out there. So Google me. You'll find me one way or another. Or hop on the live and have a conversation with us and ask. That was it, everyone. Have a magical day. Bye. Later. Later, Tater.